Ah, uh, good morning. For the first time in I can't remember how long, I finally had a good night's sleep. As a matter of fact, you could say that I slept like the dead. Don't worry though, gang, I didn't sleep inside a crypt. Last night, I slept in a 1947 Tiki bus. Oh, that's right. We're back at the Shady Dell. Possibly the most famous and easily the classiest trailer park in the world, and that's because this trailer park is nothing but vintage trailers that you can rent for the evening. Now the Shady Dell is all the way down here in Bisbee, Arizona, way down south. And this is the first time we've left our house in more than three weeks. See, I had an elderly relative type person ask me to run an errand down to southern Arizona since they can't really be getting out. And I hesitated at first, but when I found out the Shady Dell was open and I could stay in the Tiki bus, I thought, this is it. A chance to preserve my sanity and get outdoors. Into the old west. Oh, it feels good to get out. I was going to lose my mind. And as you can see, this is a great place to social distance. As I'm pretty sure we are the only people here. Now, obviously, I am going to show you the inside of the Tiki Bus. But I am going to leave you hanging for just a little bit. Because once I got down to this part of Arizona, I found out that not only is the Shady Dell open for business, but one of my favorite old west hotspots of all time has opened up. Too. And now Allie and I are heading out for her very first time ever to Tombstone. All right, passing through the historic mining town of Bisbee. I gotta tell you, it feels pretty good to get out. How about you? You feeling pretty good? Yeah. Ready to go to Tombstone? Yes. Yes. Ooh, look at this, the Mule Pass Tunnel. Nothing like a tunnel to pass your mule. We got a neighbor upstairs who likes to wrestle with his dog and stomp around and apparently do some clogging. And literally listens to crazy music and watches movies super loud with his subwoofer that's on the floor until four, five, six in the morning. Every day of the whole quarantine. So this, getting out. Is a real treat. Ain't no subwoofers in the old west. Oh, I cannot tell you how happy and incredibly blessed I feel just to be standing out here. Of course we got masks and gloves and all that kind of stuff in the car for gas stations and places like that, but you really don't need a mask when you're this socially distanced out here. All right, time to make like the Earp Brothers and head into town. Tombstone. There was a time I was very deep into the Earp Brothers history. And of course, the history of this whole town. Now, of course, it's Allie's very first time here in Tombstone. So there's no better place to start our visit than the actual OK Corral. Home of the famous gunfight at the OK Corral. Why, well, sounds pretty OK to me. Of course, I've been here and filmed this all many times before. But never during quarantine time. So this is a new sign here. Look at that. Luckily, we came prepared. Dude, check out the sweet new mask. Hey. Oh my gosh, I have never seen this few people in here. Normally, this place is sort of the center of activity for town. There's just a little less activity than normal in Tombstone at the moment. It's funny, because OK Corral is such a cliche, such a stereotype for a name of an old western place. It's easy to forget there really was an OK Corral and this is it. Just think, Wyatt Earp could have kept one of his horses right here. Oh, look at this, Allie's having fun getting a sick pick. One of these days we're gonna have to go panning for gold out here. But for the moment, I'm just satisfied walking around, taking a look at the caskets. Ah, uh, Tom and Frank McClary and Billy Clanton killed in the gunfight at the OK Corral. All right, this stuff is fun, but I'm ready to see some gunfighting. The actual gunfight happened behind the OK Corral, pretty darn close to where this reenactment happens. The Earp Brothers and Doc Holliday came in off the street here into this vacant lot between two houses, and this is where the actual confrontation took place. Normally you can push a button and see a little pre-reenactment, but it doesn't seem to be working at the moment, much to the surprise of one of the cowboys here. Oh dang, I thought we were supposed to be shooting right now. So we'll just have to content ourselves with the human reenactment, which is okay by me. <laughs> Get it? Okay. Ooh, look at this. They got social distancing built right into the benches. It's weird to think this is probably what they're going to have to do with theme parks when they reopen, too. Masks on at all times. I'm not going to be the first one to tell you Tombstone's a place to be. Pretty weird seeing Jim Halpert playing Wyatt Earp over there. Throw up your hands. I want your guns. Hold on. 
Nineteen-year-old Billy Clanton, dead. Wow, that was awesome. Nothing says family entertainment quite like a gunfight. Whoa, that guy is getting a serious fun pick. That's incredible. You were dead and now you're healed. You're better. I think they were short one bad guy for this gunfight, so instead of Ike, they used uh, Frank. Pretty freaking incredible, though, to come stand at the site of the actual gunfight. Like I said before, the Earps entered off of Fremont Street here and came into this vacant lot between these two houses. Behind the OK Corral back there. And then three bad guys were killed and laid to rest outside the town in Boot Hill Cemetery. I was going to go into the replica of C.S. Fly's house here. But speaking of flies, there's a very scary insect who's become trapped. OK, that is scarier than gunfighting. Let's get out of here. You got healed too. You're OK. Hey, they were stun <laughs> bullets. Good job, Doc Holliday. No, we're just slowly dying inside. Oh, OK, OK. I like how they were wearing masks now. They're not afraid of dying from bullets. They are afraid of dying from disease. Oh, air conditioning. I forgot about Wyatt Earp's saddle from Tombstone being in here. Oh my gosh, they have Tombstone sarsaparilla, but wait a minute, what the heck? It doesn't even say what kind of soda it is. It just says, have a real blast. And double barrels of flavor. Oh, normally I have a pretty high tolerance for heat, but uh, after being inside for so long, 100 degrees is getting to me. Not to mention the mask on the face. Oh, all right. Let's give Doc Holiday a try. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes like cherry Dr. Pepper. That does make sense. After all, it is Doc Holiday. Oh, dude, this is actually really good. I could drink this every day. Me too. Where do you get a case of this stuff? I'm actually pretty surprised the gunfights were open. A lot of businesses in town are still closed. Still fun to walk around, though, and drink in that historic flavor. Oh, look at it. I love it hand-painted signs like that. That is so sick. Sadly, the book nook is closed over here. Ali was looking forward to that. This is really hitting a lot of businesses hard. Even though businesses are allowed to open here in Tombstone, with social distancing, a lot of the business owners are older, retired people. Not to mention the fact that there aren't exactly busloads of visitors right now. Well, except for that busload. So only I'd say about half the town is really open. Hey, look at this. Old Western music. We can do some scooty Putin. Mama heaven though, she tried to very hard to fill his shoes. Ooh, here's a business that's open. Just watch the uh, the warning on the sign here. Better obey the rules. Whoa, look at that, a little dust tornado. Right in front of the stage coach. We're in the old west, alright. Alright, Matt Son, we're going to some of the shops. Oh no. Allie loves everything. Oh my gosh, if I got some of these, I wouldn't have a snake in my boot anymore. Hey. Here's the ones for me. Most of the stores are not very camera friendly. They're pretty much your box standard western souvenir stores. You know, cowboy boots and whips. But this one's located on the site where Morgan Earp was assassinated. He was playing pool right back here when this was Campbell and Hatch's saloon and billiard parlor. And was shot pretty much at the pool table right here between these doors. That is incredible. And look at this. There's still a pool table in here. Oh, Ali loves shopping. Holy cow, I need this bandana. Yeah, they got some good stuff in here. Ooh, mystical. All right, I've had enough shopping. You gotta keep the mask on for too long. I think Ali's trying to find out if we can get a ride on the stagecoach. Did it work? You got tickets already? Yeah. Sweet. Time for a stagecoach ride. Wow, look at this luxury. Nobody else is here. And our stagecoach driver's from San Bernardino. My name's Rob. I'm going to be your narrator and driver. And yes. out front we have, uh, well, we have Champ and uh, Carl. Champ and Carl. Uh, Carl's a perch rod draft for Champ's a half shire. All right, now nice Tombstone's originally going to be founded all the way back in 1879. And that's called the uh, Golden Eagle Brewery right then, burning down back in 1882. And December 28th is 1881. Burge Lerp is actually crossing the street there towards the crystal. 
Hey, out of my right hand side, second story balcony, five gunshots in the floor. Now one of them is a 10 gauge shotgun shooting old Virgil up in the left hand shoulder. Virgil doesn't die, but he does lose use of that left arm. Moving out to Colton, California. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, I love this. Nothing like a stagecoach ride. Beat sitting in my house any day. Whoa, U-turn. Actually, this should be called a horseshoe turn right now. Whoa, get out of the way. Hey, fellas. How are they going to Tampa? This is awesome. They give you so much history, tell you about all the gunfights and murders. A cowboy. Boo. Boo. Daily news. It wasn't me. People know we exist, and it's now where the gunfight happened. So if you look at my right, there's the Tombstone City Park right here. On my left, here is the Fort Deuces Saloon, the home of Addy Gordon. Johnson. John was sentenced to life in prison until February 22nd, 1884, when 80 people rushed the courthouse, which is the brick building here on my right. Well, they grabbed John Heath out of the jail cell, drug him out the front doors, down to that telegraph pole he goes, and. It's actually going to be where they hang John down there, too. In fact, it takes John over 20 minutes to die, too. Uh, so as you can know down here, the driver does talk the entire stagecoach ride. But it's pretty much the best shorthand history of the whole town, so it's worth listening to. Wait a minute. A stagecoach robber. Oh, no, that's just the guy who helps us get out. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. Oh, that was a great ride. Thank you, champ. Thank you, Carl. Look at these guys. Dude, that is awesome. Carl and the champion right there. That rules. Ooh, it is getting warm and I am getting hungry. So I think pretty soon we're gonna head back to the Tiki bus down in Bisbee for the tour. But I just remembered we're supposed to meet somebody here in Tombstone. So first, real quick, we'll have to head back over to Boot Hill. Ah yes, this is the place. The Boot Hill Graveyard. Not this new Boot Hill over here, although I like this one very much. We've got to go to the real one, where the McClowry brothers and Billy Clanton were actually buried. Sorry to be so brief at some of these places, but of course we have filmed longer episodes than each one before. And keep in mind, we're trying to get back to that sweet tiki bus. This is Allie's first time out here at Boot Hill. Her first time walking among the remains of Tombstone's dead, including Marshal Fred White, killed by Curly Bill Brocious, Will Deloge, killed playing cards, and of course, the original. Here lies Lester Moore. Four slugs from a 44. No less, no more. That's the real deal, baby. I always thought that was made up. I was sure the dude we were supposed to be meeting would be out here. After all, he loves graves, sepulchers, crematoriums, but I don't... I don't see him. Here's the grave of the quote-unquote cowboys of the OK Corral gunfight, though. There they are. Look at that. Frank and Tom McClary, Billy Clanton over there on the end, and as the sign says, murdered. In the streets of Tombstone, 1881. They stuck old Billy here on the end so he could be next to old man Clanton. A cattle rustler and real life leader of the Clanton gang who was murdered, or waylaid, or ambushed, I should say, during some of that cattle thieving. I see here he's got a little Confederate veteran marker as well. They all still have living relatives who come out here and visit from time to time. That's pretty crazy. All right, well, we better get out of here before we end up joining these people because it is murderously hot and I do not see our friend. I really thought he'd be out here. Yeah, me too. He loves the graves of people hung by mistake. Well, at least we got to see the highlights. Wait a minute. There he is. Julio, I knew you'd be out here. Come and give us a big... What? Well, we know about the whole social dis, but you should have been home with... We don't care if you had the bird flu. Nobody's worried about the bird flu right now, buddy. Come on, Julio, just get in the car. You can stay in the Tiki bus. He just won't listen to reason. Wait, I know what'll tempt him. Go get the thing. You'll never be able to resist this, Julio. If you come with us, we'll give you your very own Julio sidekick. I knew that would work. See, we've got Julio back now. All is right with the world. What's that, Julio? Oh, you better zip your lip. I will turn this car around, mister. Woo, so much to see in Tombstone, but we'll have to save the rest for another day. I think I'm about ready for a tiki bus. What say you, Allie? Yeah. Let's go. Goodbye, Tombstone. We gotta get out of the sun before we turn into raisins. Other than the heat, how'd you like your first visit? I liked it. It was really cool. Would you go back? Yeah. Yes, especially when they start doing the ghost tours and stuff again. That'll be sweet. Luckily, Bisbee is not too far from Tombstone, but wait a minute, I forgot. Oh, I can't believe I forgot about this. Tombstone was a silver mining town, but Bisbee was all about copper, and I almost forgot about Bisbee's epic copper mining 
pit. Would you look at the size of that hole? Julio didn't want to get out. He's seen it before. But oh my gosh, golly goodness. Look at those huge warehouse sized buildings on the edge over there. And then think about how deep this friggin' pit is. Wow, that's crazy. You know what this is? The pit! I fell in the pit! You fell in the pit! Okay, fine, we'll go back to the tiki bus. All right, almost there. Ooh, and like Slim Shady, we are back again. All right, we just head right in and go straight to our castle, the 1947 Tiki Bus. I love this thing. I mean, this place has a ton of epic trailers and even an old Valentine diner. But the one I've always wanted to stay in was the Tiki Bus. I mean, look at this. It's got its own front porch out here, epic palm tree carved table and chairs, and even its very own Tiki Shade Hut complete with a giant table canoe. Oh, I could get into this canoe. Last time I was here, I was right across the way in that silver trailer right in the middle there. But the whole time, much like you're probably doing right now, I was wondering, what the heck does it look like in there? Well, my friends, you are about to find out. Everybody on board the bus. Dude, look at this. This place is epic. You can see Julio feels right at home here in the driver's seat. And speaking of home, I wouldn't mind living in here forever. Look how I just closed the door right there with the little bus man lever. That is awesome. This old school bus has been converted into a tiki trailer paradise. Now obviously we slept in here last night, so it's a little ruffled, a little more ruffled than it would be if you just came here when it was fresh and clean to check in. Well, I don't think we did too much damage. Check this out up in the living area of the bus. We've got an epic working record player, free postcards, a tiki with information about how to run stuff on the bus, and a whole bunch of records to play. Grass hut thatching in the room. Air conditioning, which I guess I should probably turn off for the moment so it's a little quieter. And look at this. It's even got Sven's book of tiki. Dude, check out this little tablecloth. There's all kinds of very vintage uh, exotica in here. Like these sweet retro bowls and this epic retro lamp. Lots of Polynesian themed Hawaiian shirt looking curtains. Crazy funky throw pillows and these little chairs. It's got everything but the kitchen sink. Oh wait, there is a working kitchen sink. I don't know what all these other little crazy side doodads do around the sink, but look at this little tiki mug. There's some dishwashing supplies. And an old school coffee maker complete with free coffee and some nutter butters. I can't eat those, but Allie might. I mean, this is awesome. They've also got a little range here with a tiny little oven. I don't know if they work. I didn't exactly try it, but there's lots of trays and stuff in there. It might work. These are actually our pots and pans, or I should say pot and pan from my camping stuff. And I have my little camping stove, which we cooked on out there earlier. But take a look behind them. Allie loves these little vintage glasses with the wood handles. And I love seeing these. Look at these sweet tiki mugs, a mermaid bottle opener. Look at all the vintageness over here. Oh wow, we got some monkeys in the jungle here and we've got some, uh, whoa, rather uh, scantily clad ladies doing a little bit of um, dancing, if you will. Whoa, there's some other scantily clad ladies back here. This is a little more PG-13. Then you have your very vintage shot glass over here. And what tiki bus would be complete without a book of tiki cocktail recipes? And there's even a cocktail glass right here to mix them up with. I wouldn't even have paid attention to these cabinets, which is weird because they're at eye level till Allie pointed out. They've got little bamboo handles and inside, might want to have the kitties close their eyes on this one. You got some solo cups in here and a box of ice nudes. You may be asking yourself, what the heck are ice nudes? Which is exactly what I asked myself. It turns out ice nudes is a little plastic ice cube tray that you can put water into and create ice cubes shaped like three-dimensional 
Nude ladies. I would say that's inappropriate, except, you know, it's art. Well, of course, I had to launch the quest through the other cabinets, and look at this. Look at all the sweet dishware and dinner plates and all kinds of bamboo thatching in there. And then down at the end, we passed this up a second ago. Some board games, including a very vintage version of Monopoly, complete with instructions and... <gasps> Some Monopoly money. I'm rich down below. They've got a refrigerator. I got some yogurt in there, you know. Gotta start dieting soon. I gained a little quarantine weight. And there's paper towels and other things. There was actually a trash can right here, but I set it outside so you wouldn't uh, have an obstructed view of the Julio gang. This is just one epic place to have a tiki cocktail and chill. If there was a TV in here, you could crank up the AC and have Netflix and chill for real. Now moving on into this bedroom area of the bus, you'll see here a kind of small double bed. It's not huge. Even as tiny as Allie is, we couldn't really sleep on this together for long because even though it's not really the peak of summer, it was still pretty warm yesterday and it took a long time to cool the bus down, so we had to leave some room for the spirit here. And Allie slept across the way over here on this tiny little bunk. Oh yeah, it's actually really comfortable, nice. Soft mattress, that one's a little more firm. And actually, there's a great view out of these tiki curtains to the old tiki hut outside. Which at night, well, I'll just show you when it's night. Nice tiki mask of old lips here above your pillow. And then on the other side, a nice little exotic island hut. Plenty of thatching around here. Very groovy vintage curtains. And at the foot of Allie's little bed over here, a nice wooden fish, a nice exotic Mary Blair looking bird, a smoke detector, that's always useful. Allie's water, oh, what she got over here? <gasps> She's got some Twix, guys. She's got some Twix. Oops, I dropped my lotion there and wait a minute, what? The shell is this a shell? We got one half of a new brassiere here, ladies and gentlemen. I love the little light fixtures. They got these bulbs over here, and can you see those? Those are epic. Just my stuff. I have our own house. I'm putting these kind of sort of boomerang, atomic looking light fixtures everywhere. And then you remember when we were talking about the ice being art? Well, this is very artistic indeed. Check out the door. To the bathroom. Oh boy. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Oh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We got a bathroom aboard the bus and two very spacious, very roomy little side closets over here. Oh, there's my Doritos. I mean, all of our stuff could just fit into one over here. I got my giant camping food box, a huge duffel bag full of our clothes. On the other side, all I've got is a couple of backpacks, Allie's purse, and there's still plenty of room in here. Maybe we could have brought Aunt Tilly along. All right, prepare to enter the art room here. You got to be careful. You got to watch your step because it's sort of multi-level down here. And here you will see the beautiful... Blue toilet themed, blue paint themed, rope lit bathroom, complete with its own pufferfish lamp, tiki, very 1950s plastic sconce, plenty of towels, don't forget to bring a towel, a trash can for disposing of sanitary items that you are not supposed to flush in here, some seashells to see, and don't get to watch your head in here, this very strange mirror over here which you can check out mirror in the bathroom can't you see that's where i can look at me all in all a pretty darn sweet setup but the mood gets even moodier or even vibier i should say when the sun finishes going all the way down and night falls upon the shady dell okay it's time but first a little tiki music See, without all the light pollution from outside, all the little lamps start to glow different. And there's a whole other vibe and a whole other mood in here. Especially once you start turning out the lights to go to sleep. See, once you get these bad boys off and head back into the artistic room to unplug the rope light in here. Hello, Mr. Pufferfish. It starts to get more and more cozy. Excuse me there, Julio. Just one more lamp to go, and we let our eyes adjust and check out the funky greenish-blue 
Christmas lights. Which, along with the glow from the tiki hut and the little gazebo outside, really, really make this a cool place to sleep. Wow. Look at that. Look at Allie's view out there. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. All night you hear that vintage music out there, the soft green glow of the tiki lamps. I know it's a little dark. You can't really see. But trust me, as Allie would say, it's a mood. Okay, I guess we could turn the lights back on for the moment. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier that at the front of the bus, right across from the driver's seat, there's a whole other little lounge area. Perfect for lounging around. It's too bad we're not really drinkers. We didn't bring any kind of grown-up adult beverage, if you know what I mean. But wait a minute. I think we can still have a tiki cocktail using alternative methods. Just gotta grab some tiki glasses, rinse them out just a little bit, because they kind of smell like an old foot, but maybe that's just the vintaginess. Dang, I wish we had gotten those ice nudes to work. And then, if you'll join me outside, madam, shall you? We can really get this party going. If you listen carefully out here, you can hear the vintage radio station they have playing in the Shady Dell, complete with commercials. And check out the transformation in our private little tiki hut out here. Look at that. It's just a couple of Christmas lights and a little tap of cloth lamp. But it definitely does the trick. All right, we just gotta grab a couple of cold Mountain Dews in here. And now we are ready to party. Yes! Oh yeah, dude, I should get really crazy and pour some Dr. Pepper in this bad boy too. Should I? Oh, Trader Vic's got nothing on this mix. Okay, you ready? Cheers. Oh, that's actually good. How's yours? Pretty good. Well, yours is just Mountain Dew. I'm the one living dangerously over here. Mm. The Dr. P, the Mountain D, and of course, the footy vintage glass. Maybe it's just the mood lighting talking, but it is really hitting the spot. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The 1947 Shady Dale Vintage Tiki Bus. As you can see, it is one heck of a place to party. Ooh, there's actually some people over there in the communal gazebo. There was nobody out here last night. And now, finally, the weather has gone down to about 80 degrees. The moon has come out soon. The sky will be peppered with stars. And then it'll be time for us to crawl in the bus and go to sleep. Look at this, this is the one I stayed in last time, the Spartan Royal Mansion, something like that. And they used to have a screen to show vintage movies down over here by the diner, but I guess they're moving it to a different part of the park. But this is one heck of a place to stay, especially after dark, when you forget that there's a cemetery behind these things. Man, it was a total accidental happenstance, a total lucky series of events that came together for us to be able to get out of the house finally and cruise down here to the shady dell we will definitely definitely come back here so don't worry if you wanted to see more there are still tons of vintage trailers left out here that we haven't stayed in yet and i really want to get to not to mention the fact that now that i finally got to stay in the tiki bus i will never be fully satisfied until i have stayed in the tiki boat as well. All right, gang, it is starting to get pretty darn dark out here. Time for us to head back into our Tiki Bus. I hope you enjoyed this spur of the moment adventure. Don't forget to check out all the links down below. And remember, we have our new online store, store.randomland.com, featuring sweet new hats and sweet random land sidekicks. But for now, I think we've drank all the impromptu soda cocktails we can. So now, to the back of the bus, curl up with a good book, and that means we've done our duty. We can go home and sleep well. Wait, I mean, sleep shady Dell. <laughs>
the pit. I fell in the pit. You fell in the pit. We all fell in the pit. Yeah. Where? In the pit. I fell in the pit. Come on, let's go in the pit. We'll all go in the pit. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Champion's got a mask on, too. I guess that means we can ride the champ. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The chickens on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The chickens on the bus go up and down all through the town. The alley on the bus just reads her book. Whoa, reads her book, reads her book. The alley on the bus just reads her book all through the town. The wheels on the bus go beep, 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 and honk, honk, honk. And the other thing, look, Mom, no hands. I'm driving the bus all through the town. Are you done? Yes, I'm done. <laughs>